in case you can't figure out, you'll be the second screen back. Okay. A little bit extra room. Hey, how are you today? Good. So oh, far, so good. Okay, the usual stuff calculator, notebook, periodic table. What else? Mobile map. All right, let me get He's running slowly. Okay, all your stuff out, please. I need notebook, calculator. All right, so I'm still looking for people here. What do we got? Hi, Colin. Hello. All right, I'm going to start with just a quick one while we're waiting for everybody else to show up. Hi there. Share screen. Get this right here. All right, we have. Gosh, let me do that different color. That'll be bad. Okay, you with me? Calculator, periodic table, mobile map. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to see you on Wednesday. So I'm kind of planning, you know, when we'll we'll fill on the blank as you see. And I'll probably have an attached document that I can see so you can check on your work because Friday you're tested. So it's going to be more of what kind of review today because we'll be in the previous session. Okay. So, 
We're starting with the temple. We're going to go everywhere in Malta. Everywhere we possibly go. We have 363 grams of oxygen. Okay, oxygen gas. Okay? And I want to know if the volume of the CO2. So you should need me to start. But I have one reality check for everybody. At home, can you see that? Did I share it? Sometimes I forget. So I'm trying to make sure I do. And I know I left all my, I had all my little cards in my book by accident. I went home this weekend. There they are. Everybody be, can be called on, everybody plays. Okay, so I need a reality check before we start. Look on your periodic table, look at oxygen, please. Do you notice anything about oxygen on your periodic table? Are you noticing anything about oxygen on your periodic table? Odin, what are you noticing? It's in, we had to draw something around it, didn't we? Do you see something drawn around it? It looks like a seven, doesn't it? What does that tell me immediately about the formula? Go ahead. It's O2. Okay, so start. You can't get it right if you don't start with the right formula. So we know that this is Okay, might not matter now, but it will eventually. Okay, another question. Joey, if I'm trying to give volume, where do I have to go on Moleville map? Leader town for gases. Okay, so we know we're starting. Maybe it's not in this class. Other half for the class. Baruka, where are we starting on Moleville? Um, Granville. In Granville. Starting in Granville, we're heading to Leader Town. And now we know the proper formula. Here's everybody. I don't see Abdul yet. Okay, you shouldn't need me at all because you're ready to test. The next time I see you, you're going to be testing. Don't you dare wait for me, Dylan. I don't see you writing or calculating. got this new little piece of technology that I'm going to try out here. I lost my scratch. There it is.
Okay, got my little camera here. All right, stop. What do you need to write that I have up there that you did not have written down? If you didn't even know where to begin and you're not asking a question, how are you gonna pass a hundred point test on the last day of the quarter? You've got to pass it. So you've got to ask questions. Does it make sense? We started with 353 grams over one. What is this guy? Nor what's that call called? What's that 32 grams? You got you calculated it, didn't you? Where did I get that from? It's the what? It's the molar mass of oxygen, which is O2. Okay. And then um, Dylan, what is this 22.4? It's the molar volume, okay? And so that's, if it's at STP, we can use that number to get to liter 10. And I got an answer here, you probably can't read it. All right, people at home, is that how you set it up? Give me thumbs up if you're good. Okay, excellent. Veruca got, is in there. Okay, so I got 247.1. I'm going to round it to three six six. 247 liters of oxygen is my final answer. Okay. All right, I'm going back to the other screen. Yes, ask a question. How did I know? Draw seven at random. Months ago, you have it there, but it's very simple to draw. I'm giving you a marker right now. Anybody else? We'll have it also on the table. Okay. Do you have a marker in your book? Make sure it's clean off the marker. Okay, I'm going to put it, I have one right here. Let's mark it up. Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, chlorine, and hydrogen. Everybody in brown. Elijah, everybody in brown, including hydrogen. So there's seven altogether. Okay, you will get to use your periodic table, but you gotta remember it. And so marking it on the periodic table is gonna help you remember. Bella, you got it on yours? You're all good, you're all good. Okay. Odin, you got it on yours? Any of those, if I say fluorine, it's F2. If I say iodine, it's F2, I2. If I say hydrogen, it's H2. Okay, but if I say oxygen atoms, it's not. It's when it's the element, okay? All right, I'm going back to this guy. All right, next question we're going to answer. Now, I want to take 353 grams of oxygen, and I want to find the molecules of oxygen.
when you start calculating and you never turned on your calculator. Okay, go ahead and do it. Don't wait for me. Okay, this is really easy for some of you, I know. Excellent. Don't feel badly. It means you got your skills, you're up to snuff. Okay, so how are we doing? Joey, do you have a question? It looks like you're looking for something. If I could help you so that you can use your class time more efficiently, I would love to help you. Are you wondering where molecules are located? Okay, look at your mobile map. I will tell you right now, it's one of the particles. Do you see under Particleville that you have ions, atoms, molecules, and formula units? Okay, another thing, when you get my mobile maps, they're not gonna have those things on there, but I may just put them on the board because the people at home are gonna get to use theirs theirs that they wrote on, so that's not really fair. Okay, so we're looking for molecules. They are in Particleville. Hopefully everybody went to Particleville. You're using your um, exponent key correctly, hopefully. Let's go back. I keep pulling the wrong one. Hold on, I don't want you. Here's my little camera. Oh, it's just underneath here. Okay. All right, so here's how I laid it out. Hopefully yours looks similar. I wanna point out a few things. Let me do it with a different color. Molar mass, molar volume, molar mass, Avogadro's number. Those are the conversion factors that we are using to get from one place to another. Okay, does your calculator say the same number that's on my page? Yes. That's tell okay. I thought that was a question. We could. He's telling me heads up. Yay, I got it. Got it, Adriana? Yeah. You should underneath particle. You should say atom, ion, formula they are all types of particles. Okay, so any of those things. The next question I'm about to ask you is how many atoms of oxygen? So that's what's going on the board right now. But I'm trying to make sure that everybody got this. So do you understand how to get to molecules? Well, it depends because I might say uh, Yes. So now we want to go to atoms. So let me write it down. Oops, on my other sheet. 
can see why I'm using the other screen because it's uh, I write better on their paper. So atoms of oxygen, everybody. Yes. It should have been 6.64 times 10 to the 24. We didn't get that. That's why your number would be totally different. Yes. <laughs> okay, if you already got it, excellent. Write it all out. Make sure you have the right number of sig figs. Make sure there's a unit on it because units matter. And you'll be docked if you don't have units on your problem. Um, we're not officially um, grading for sig figs, but I'll, I'll note that your sig figs aren't quite right because I want you to start thinking about them as we're going to get into more labs now. Oh, well, thank you. All right, so atoms of oxygen, I'm going to In my white out, I just had the problem with writing a marker. Okay, so I want to talk about this. You are already in Particleville. You see in Particleville, it has molecules and atoms are located there. So when we have to convert from one type of particle to another type of particle, we use the chemical formula. What's the chemical formula for this? It's a nice simple one, right? Yeah, O2. So what we need to know is that if we have one molecule, of O2, it equals how many oxygen atoms? Yeah, hopefully you're gonna say two, right? Because O2 has two oxygen atoms for every molecule. All right, so what does that mean to me? Atoms of oxygen, molecules of oxygen. Now I just fill in the blanks. This is going to have a little bit of a lag, sorry. You have oxygen atoms, you have molecules of oxygen, and now you just do your math. that lags a little bit. And in order to get this conversion factor, I use the molecular formula. Hopefully that's making sense. Oops, I'm cutting off the edge here. Okay, first problem down. What questions do you have so far about the first problem? Oops, 
sorry, some people are still looking at that. Odin, any questions? Did you follow everything? Could you come up with it on your own? Pretty much. Okay. Dylan, could you could you come up with it on your own? Bella, which part couldn't you come up with? The last part or all of it? Hmm? All of it? Okay, so at the, so you have the middle in that half. You have Avogadro's number written. You have all of that written. You have all the body. So you have to go to the other place. Okay. Do you understand that when I am in Granville, the only way I can get out of Granville is a little more though. Okay, and how do I know you could the problem give me something that's going so this problem is that 353 grand. So you have to start there in hand with the grandpa. And you have to use the molar map to get more. Okay, molar map for volume, and the only place you have volume on the whole map. Okay, and the only way to get the meters down is to use the molar volume. Which is that's what it's going to be used in the whole map. Okay, so if you look at the map you go and you look at each one of these things, like I just put that's when we use the molar mass, this is when we use the Avogadro's number. This is when we use molar mass. This is when we use the molar volume. I, I'm trying to label them too so you can see where we're located and what the thing is. If you say, oh, it's molar volume, then you can go and look for the number. But just knowing those three and how to organize them is kind of the most important part of this. All right. So um, problem number two. You ready? Here you go. Let me just get to another screen. I can't get to another screen because I'm in the pen. Come on. <laughs> I won't click on anything. It's because my Zoom's in the way. All right. Thank you. All right. So now we have uh, Magnesium nitrate is our substance. We have, let's do another nice number. Um, I don't know, it's going crazy. Come on, Penn. I'm getting lots of lag time today. Magnesium nitrate, I don't know why my pen's going crazy. I'm not even on the screen. It's got a mind of its own. Hello. Okay, so as soon as you hear magnesium nitrate, you see that first word. Find it on the periodic table. Did you find it on the periodic table, magnesium? And you said, where is it located? It's a metal, right? And so ionic, that means nitrate's got to be on the back, All right? So write your formula. All right, where do we want to go? Well, can we go to leader town? Is this going to be a gas? Ionic substances are always solid at room temperature, always. So it's not going to be a gas. So we're never going to go to liter town. So we're probably going to particleville. So let's say how many ions And I want to change this to individual
still present in the sample. Okay, Bella, what am I given? I'm given grams, right? So where, how do I get out of Gramville? It doesn't matter where I'm going. How do I get out of Gramville? I got to use what? The molar mass. So you got to find the molar mass. There's no way out of it. If you're in Gramville or you got to get to Gramville, you're going to need that molar mass. Alex, can we go directly from Granville to um, Ions? Where do we usually go before we get to Ions? We have to get to Moles, and then when we leave Moleville, we're, we're going to head to where? Formula units, right? Because it's an ionic compound, we know we have to find formula units, and then we'll do another calculation next. I got them in trouble. Because it just seemed dumb to write a pass to every person, you know, and I hand it to them. Okay. Individual iron. Okay, I have found the molar mass and I've laid out the whole problem, but I haven't put any numbers in. I'm going to leave that to you. Come on. It's always in the way. Just won't go away. There you go. All right. So get this guy out of the way. So that was my formula. Did you have the same formula? If you didn't, you have to be careful. And that was how I found my molar mass. Because remember, when there's a two. On the outside, everything inside has to be double. Okay, if it's a three, you have to multiply by three. So that's why we have two nitrogens and six oxygen. I've been doing chemistry for a hundred years, and I still do my molar mass like this every single time because I don't make I don't want to make mistakes. It's embarrassing. And you don't want to make mistakes because it's a big test. What can't you read, Nor? Are you wondering here? 
So here, all I did was I canceled units, but I didn't put in any numbers, all right? This one has grams and mole. Well, that's gonna be molar mass, right? And this one has moles and formula units. So that's gonna be Avogadro's number. And this one is formula units and ions. And so that's gonna be the formula. We have to use the formula to get that. Say that again. Um, Remember how we said for one molecule, we had two atoms. Now we're going to say for every formula unit, how many ions. So we'll get there in a second if you're stuck on that one. But look at the formula and think about it when you say its name. <laughs> And then think about how many of each of the types, because every ion says its name, right? So when we say magnesium nitrate, and then we look at the formula, it gives us a hint. Okay, don't wait for me to put numbers in. You know what number goes next to what unit if you can put the units in the right place and then fill in the numbers at you, as you need. Okay, Alex, Elijah, everything going okay back there? Making sense? Bella, is any of it starting to click? Okay, good. Just keep pushing and you'll be able to do it. You just gotta keep doing more practice. All right, so I filled in molar mass, change that. Well, you should have it, so you, didn't, you don't need my number have your number. And here's Avogadro's number. And this is from the formula down here. So I'm making a pretty little picture for you. Look at magnesium nitrate. You see it? When that goes into water, all of the ions break up. They called dissociation and they, they float around by themselves. Magnesium ion, well, there's only one of them, right? And then how many nitrate ions are there? Well, this says two. So first of all, magnesium and nitrate, you know that's the only types of ions, but we happen to have two because the formula tells me I have two. Does that make sense? Because that little two right here, says, I got two of everything in that little bracket. And that's why when we write it, we have to keep it as NO3. We don't say N2O6, that doesn't make sense. I calculated this right, didn't I? I think that's something. Okay. 
six pence. I was just doubting myself for a second there. All right, so I didn't get my final thing. So what are we gonna put by ions? Well, we're gonna say we have three ions for every one formula unit. See them? Three ions, one formula unit. That's what that picture is trying to show you. So we got to put that in. I'll have three ions, one formula unit. So now I'm going to do my calculation. Oops, put the right number in. It's a big number. Seems like I feel like I did something wrong. Let me just, you know what? I think I forgot to divide by the molar mass. I did. Don't put my number down. Okay, that looks better. It shouldn't have gotten that much bigger. Let me see if I have my little white out thing. Okay, what do I have? I should have 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 24th. Does everybody concur? Did they do it right this time? I just, I, I skipped right over this guy. I didn't even use it. Okay, one of the reasons why you have to show work, because if you set it all up, that's most of the points. And you do a silly thing, like you forget to divide by one of the things. Well, then you lose a point for doing that silly mistake, but you get all the points for doing the work. Okay, so work is absolutely required. And Colin, I want to point this out especially to you. Um, all of you that are taking it online on Friday, you have to show the work. We put them in a multiple choice format. You'll have one point for the answer, but you have to use the scratch pad and show all your dimensional analysis to get the rest of the points. And some of them worth, uh, are worth up to eight points. Okay. So just FYI. And if you have to do a molar mass, yeah. Okay, I'm going to take my feet over here. See, just ask me and I can come and I can troubleshoot it. All right, was that helpful? Did that tell you how to use Mobile? Okay, what's the next thing? We need to do a percent composition. So let's do something with percent composition. But take two minutes and get a drink of water if you, well, you can't. Drink from your water bottle if you need to. Go behind your screen to do it. <sighs> Check your messages. I know you're dying to. All right, so at 35, we'll start back up again. So if you guys need to use the restroom, go for it. They can actually eat snacks. So we'll do a, do a percent comp and then we'll apply it. Say how many carbon out of you. Okay, so Friday's it, the quarter's over. So um, Bean Lab, missing half of those. Scoops Lab, I'm trying to think, one of the classes was excluded from that. Mm -hmm. Was that you guys? Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. But the percent composition sheet, the, um, The bean lab, the percent composition sheet, and mm -hmm. 
Oh, and that one that was um, a whole bunch of a variety of questions from that chapter. This chapter is in that. Well, I'll take it, but I'm doubting it. Yeah. Now, it's late. Yeah. Friday. I mean, if it's not in by three o'clock on Friday, don't have to. I'm not going back. Because I have to, especially the electronic. I have one for you to introduce to my old mama. That would make it. Cover everything up. First thing, multiply, divide. Don't put the one in, just say divide by this. Equal. You really should do each step separately, especially when there's something down here to divide. If this is on the bottom and you don't do it separately, you're going to run into trouble if you don't do parentheses. So divide by 148.23 equals. Then multiply by this equals, and then multiply by that. Equals. Okay, so you're putting them all in, but you're just summating between each step. And then it just it you get far more errors if you don't use your parentheses right. Okay, so take your 83.2. Did you start with 83.2? Okay, do that. And you know, so basically you're solving for moles right there. One over it. Okay, so that's divided. Okay. So but you said you didn't get to the same one. Okay, so I think it's time. Let me go back to this guy. We'll put a question out there. <laughs> if this is in full screen, I can't see the um, writing tools. Come on, get out of the way. Okay, a new question for you.
what is the percent comp of iron three chloride? And then I'm going to add another part to that question after we're done with that. Okay, everybody at home is doing okay? Alana, is everything going well? Rook, excuse me, Bruca and Colin as well. I feel like I was breaking up earlier today. Am I doing okay? Thank you, Alana, for answering. Okay, it is so important to have the right formula. Do you have it all the way done already, Norm? Okay, so who's my second one here? Elijah, what did you get for the formula of iron three chloride? You couldn't do this unless you had a formula. What did you get for the formula? Everybody, reality check. Did you have FeCl3? Excellent. Then you're on the right track. Keep going. Because you know you're looking on the back side of your periodic table whenever you see that Roman numeral. You know it's ionic. Okay, I'm going to add a second part of the problem. This is A.
I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a decimal on this so it has more sig figs. Someone asked me if we could take a picture, and I see that I can take a picture. Oh, that's cool. Go away. All right, so I'm about to go through the second part. If you know how to do it, do not wait for me. Here's what we know. We know that in this material, 34% of it is iron and 65% of it is chlorine. So we only care about this piece. So I'm gonna write something out. I'm gonna say for every 100 grams, of FeCl3, because remember percents always out of 100, equals 34.43 grams of iron. You see how we got this 34.43 is how many, because if I add this up, it's out of 100 grams. That's what a percent means, how much out of 100. If my sample was 100 grams, I would just say the percent. So here we are. We have grams of FeCl3. So I'm going to put grams of FeCl3 on the bottom. And I'm going to put grams of Fe on the top. These guys will cancel and I'll get what I need. Okay. So what's going to go on the top? What's going to go on the bottom? So you need a number on both the top and the bottom. We haven't seen that very much. So we have to do that. Okay, so let me just put it in 100 here and 34.43. Um, our percents are usually to four sig figs because our molar masses are a lot of sig figs. I'm thinking it's between 70 and 80 grams, probably, right? I made this up, so I don't really know off the top of my head. Go ahead and do the math. That's what we should have been learning when we were doing our percent comp sheet. Um, by the way, question seven and eight on the percent comp sheet, you, you don't know how to do those and you don't need to learn how to do those. I just forgot to take those out. Okay, let's do our math.
Okay, so I said, you know, 70, 80, a third of 250. Okay. So it makes sense. It should be a reasonable number, right? You know, if it's 25%, it's a quarter of it. What are we thinking? Are we feeling okay with this? All right, are, did you get a wrong answer? 59, 69, 61. Let me do it again. Did I do something wrong? I don't think I did. 60. Time 34.43. I'm going to get 86 again. Hi, Baruka. Sorry you got kicked out. Um, especially when there are long problems, I always multiply it out twice. And if I get the same answer twice, I know I'm feeling good. Yes, Elijah. In the problem. How many grams of iron are in 250 gram sample? No, it's okay. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, you know, I'm trying to have my work be as legible as possible, but I was putting the questions on another sheet. I guess I could have just added them here. Okay. All right, what else? Do you wanna go back and do another Mulville problem? What I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna videotape exactly what I just did for you guys and put it for the remote lesson for the Tuesday group. <clears throat> so then you can watch, but you know, you can watch Zoom. I've been posting the Zooms. I went back and posted them all. Yeah. Part B was if I have 250 grams of sample, how much is iron? Sorry about that. I got hasty and I moved it away. All right, we got 10 minutes, so we have to do another problem. Um, I know, empirical formula. Let's see, I did that one. Say it again. Once it does it, oh, <laughs> I'm thinking it ends at noon, 15. Oh, good. All right, we're doing another problem then. All right, so. All right, I'm just gonna write the whole problem on here because then you won't have to worry about if I switch screens. Now that I, I wasn't sure if it would be legible enough, but it looks like it's okay. I gotta tilt it and then I'll move it. All right. Okay, can you read that? How many atoms are in 7,502 liters of carbon dioxide at STP? Okay, can everybody read that all right? 7,502 liters of carbon dioxide at STP. I wanna know how many atoms are in the sample. And then I'm gonna ask something else for B.
I totally feel this. I just like I want to make copies, and all of a sudden this was on my desk. I had asked for it, so I don't know anything about it yet. Oh, I can zoom it in. I think. No. I'm learning. <laughs> It's called the visualizer. So every single person put 7,502 liters over one time sign fraction line, repeat the unit. I'm giving you a hint on how many steps it should take. Odin, I see you shaking your head. Do you know where to begin? Because you're in leader town, right? So what's the first step? You always have to get to Moleville. Mm -hmm. And then I ultimately want Adams. So where do I have to get to? Mm -hmm. But can I go to Adams directly? Not quite, not this time. So we have to do two steps to do what we want. So let's give it a stab, lay it out, cancel things as you can. As always, we need a right, correct formula to get everything going right. So Colin, what's the formula of carbon dioxide? CO2. This is a lot easier to read than my scribbling on that whiteboard, isn't it? I think. Is it? Big enough. I probably can make this full screen. Let me see if I can do that. Let me try that. Actually, I made it smaller. There we go. I can zoom it in. Oops, go away. Where did my visualizer go? That's not it. It just appeared. Where'd it go? There it is. Come on, open. There it is. I don't know where it went. I'm just getting ahead of myself. <laughs> okay. All right. So you went from Leader Town to Moleville. You went from Moleville, nor once we get out of Moleville, we're trying to go to carbon dioxide. So what are we going to get to first? When we head to hit Particleville, what are we going to look for? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Oh, that goes to Gramville. Do we want to go to Gramville? Am I asking anything about Grams? No. OK. So we're trying to get to Adams. OK, where's Adams located? Particleville. Okay, so what do I need to get to Particleville? The what? Not molar volume. This is molar volume. Are you looking at your molar map? Your molar map, molar map. Okay, what conversion factor is next to the line that gets me to Particleville?
Okay, I'm pulling mine out. Here we go. Okay, you should be looking on yours though. All right, let me make this. I wonder if I can make it a bigger. So we use molar volume to go from leader town to Moleville, right? We want to get to Particleville. What do we have to use? What's it called? Do you see it? You should have this written on Avogadro's number. And when we get there, I need to know what the unit's going to be for carbon dioxide. Is it going to be atoms? Uh uh. What is it? Is it a formula unit? Mm -hmm. That's not ionic. Is it an ion? Mm -mm. And it's definitely not atoms. What's the only thing left? Should be written on your molecules, right? Because isn't CO2 a molecule? Because it's covalent. Okay, so we're going to go from moles to molecules. We'll use Avogadro's number. This was molar volume. And then we're going to go from molecules to atoms. And the way we use to do that, we get use the formula. Does that make sense? Because we said CO2, one CO2 molecule equals These things I'm circling down on the bottom are our conversion factors that we're going to use. This is 22.4. That pen's starting to die already. Dylan, when I have one molecule of CO2, how many atoms do I have? Say that again. If I have one molecule of CO2, how many atoms do I have? Three. Okay. And when everybody's canceled out, we cancel out liters, we cancel out moles, we cancel out molecules, what we get left with with our atoms. And when I say use the formula, that's what I'm doing down at the bottom. It's probably a really big number because that's a lot of grant, a lot of liters. I think I got everything. I always calculate it twice, so let me do that one more time. All right, I got it again. And since 7502 liters had four sig figs, I put four sig figs on my answer and I always make sure I have a unit. Um, you're immediately gonna lose a half a point for a unit for every problem. So please put a unit on it. And it's whatever they're asking for. They're asking for atoms, so it better have atoms on it at the end. Okay, we're still doing all right. Bella, starting, starting. All right, then we'll do one more quickly because why not, right? Let's get it, we need it to get down. Okay, so we're gonna do potassium sulfide. 
is going to be our next problem. So start out by getting the formula when I write the problem. Potassium sulfide. And we'll do 432 grams of potassium. And it's really important to read the question. Oh, sorry. It quit unexpectedly. That was before. Thank you. This is going to really help with AP because we did one problem the other day and it was an entire period to do one problem. So you can't really do it on one whiteboard or one screen. So I'll be able to do the whole continuous thing. Okay, potassium sulfide, I-D-E. Be looking up at the top of your ions. Okay, this makes me sit down though. Alana, tell me what you have for a formula for potassium sulfide. I got K2S. Okay, I got K2S also. I think it's a weight choice. Okay, yeah, one one oh.
Moleville is your friend. Use it wisely. Remember, no um, phones as calculators on the test. So just make sure you feel comfortable using mine. And I'll be giving you periodic tables and Moleville maps. And if you're um, an in-person kid, you won't be taking it online unless you go into quarantine. But if you're just sick for the day. Okay, so I have it all laid out. I haven't put any numbers in it. Odin, did you get the same molar mass that I did? 110.27. Joey, one formula unit in this case equals how many ions? Potassium sulfide. Mm -hmm. hmm? No, no, no. If I have one formula unit, how many ions does that become? I'm looking at my conversion to do the last step. Remember how we said one carbon dioxide molecule was equal to three atoms? Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for. It's K2S. So how many potassium ions do I have? And how many sulfide ions do I have? So three. One formula unit is going to be equal to three ions. Okay, so we get three. Okay, push it up. Is that what you got, everybody? There, it's not even too crooked anymore. <laughs> ah. All right, so that was that was good work. That was review. It's everything we learned in the mole. Um. Probably one of your assignments this week is going to be um, getting started on the reading guide for the next chapter. We would have loved to have tested you today, but we just, with tomorrow and Wednesday being questionable, we, we just couldn't make that work. So, um, so hopefully everybody has a book at home. You all have the online book. So when you get to do in the reading guide, I actually turned it into a Google Doc. So you just be filling it out. And you won't have to do the whole thing. You'll start with the first section. But we definitely want you to read the book because the next chapter has a lot of new stuff in it. So we want you to see the pictures and read through everything. I don't know. I thought that one pretty good. Did you guys like that? This is kind of nice, isn't it? Because I could be looking at you and I can, I feel like it's a little more legible than I usually do. <laughs> All right, okay, good. And um, I've Zoomed with students. I Zoomed with someone earlier today about one of the labs because they were confused. 
and we got it all figured out. Or you can ask me a question in person right now because you're not sure how to do things. Ah! Please, please, please make sure you clean your desk after you. Okay, hey guys at home, everything going okay? Alana, Colin and Veruca, are you ready for your test on Friday? Yeah. I have a big thing. Thank you, Verica. Alana, you feeling better about this stuff? Excellent. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dismiss you early, home people. Have a great day, and look for my um, you know, assignment for Wednesday. Okay. <laughs>